What's up, Cal Gang? All right, we're gonna assume uh, chain rule problems here. Uh, so it wants us to find the derivative of z with respect to t. So it gives us a function z is equal to x and y, and then it shows you that x is equal to t plus one, and y is equal to t squared minus one, of course. Okay, so how do we find this? Well, I'd like to set up a chart when I solve these kind of problems. Um, because, you know, you want to keep things simple, right? You want to keep things that you can visually see what's going on. So, of course, if you want to take the derivative of z with respect to t, there's no t's in this function, so you have to, you know, put in t's and stuff. But if you put in, you know, t to the third, it's going to be, like, really big if you just substitute it in this for that. So, we're not going to do that. We're just going to set up a little chart instead. So, watch this. All right, so let's start with our main function, z, right? This is where we're trying to find. If z is equal to x and y, but then you have each individual x and y is equal to a function of t, right? So it starts with z and it goes to x and y, right? Those are the two functions that z can become. But then x and y, x can only become t, and y can only become, oh my god, okay. Okay, and then y can only become t, right? All right, so here we have a chart. So now let me show you what you can do. So when you're taking the derivative of z, but you're going to x, you could go two ways, right? You can go to x or you can go to y. So we're gonna go with x, so, but that means that you're gonna take a partial derivative, right? It's gonna be a del, a curvy d, instead of a normal d, because you're taking only with respect to one. So the derivative of del x with respect to x first, or del z with respect to x. But then you're going from x to t, there's only one variable, so it's just gonna be normal d, dx dt. Now same thing down here, it's gonna be del, uh, del z, but del y, because you're taking it with respect to y, not x. But then once again, there's only one variable, so it's gonna be a normal d dy, dt. All right, so now to do this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply this by this, and then you're gonna add it to this times this. So our integral, or it's gonna look something like this. The derivative of z with respect to t is gonna be del z, del x, times uh, normal dx, dt, plus del z, del y, then dy dt. All right, now that's our function. So what we need to do? Well, we just have to take some derivatives, right? All right, so let's see, let's set it up. Down here, it's gonna be equal to, all right, so the derivative of z with respect to x is this with respect to x. So it's going to be, what, hold on. Yep, okay, so it's going to be equal to, uh, so it's gonna be y to the third, minus 2xy, all of this times the derivative of x with respect to t, which is 2t, and then plus, uh, so the derivative of z with respect to y, of course, it's going to be 3xy squared minus x squared, but then all of this times the derivative of y with respect to t, which is going to be 2t. All right, and I'm pretty sure the textbook does something like this. It brings out the 2t's. And then it has y to the third plus 2xy plus 3xy squared minus x squared. And that's what it gives you as your final answer. So let's say you do some chain rule problems. I really enjoy these graphs. You should practice them because it makes it so much easier when you can just look at it. You can just kind of follow along. And it works for infinitely many variables. So once you get to the questions with three and four variables and then x has multiple variables, it makes it way easier, right? So that's how you do these kind of problems. So yeah, good luck on your calc homework, guys.